The National Mall is the heart of our nation's capital, a very special place where we can visit and reflect upon our unique American heritage and look toward the promise of our bright, bountiful American future. A place where history speaks to us of the people, by the people, and for the people. The Mall is where we remember America's history through our national monuments and explore culture, science, and art in our museums where we celebrate the 4th of July and a uniquely American sense of freedom and play in the open space. Where historically, citizens have come to petition the government, Martin Luther King in 1963, American farmers in the 70s, advocates to combat AIDS in the 1980s and 90s, and each year, thousands of visitors learn about world cultures during the Smithsonian Folklife Festival. The Mall has become the stage for American democracy. The Mall is as old as the nation itself. Now it depends on we the people to carry it forward into its third century. It all started with our first president, George Washington, who in 1791 commissioned Pierre L'Enfant to create a plan for the new capital of the United States. L'Enfant looked out over the rolling hills at the confluence of the Potomac and Anacostia rivers and designed a city featuring broad diagonal avenues. He envisioned Washington as a symbol of the new nation and the U.S. Constitution. On a prominent hill at the center of the city, he located the Capitol building. Another rise a mile away was chosen for the President's house. He punctuated the powerfully symbolic point where a line west from the Capitol intersected a line south from the White House with a monument to George Washington, at that time along the banks of the Potomac River. The monument marked the western terminus of a broad green public promenade we know today as the National Mall. For L'Enfant, the mall was to be a grand avenue, 400 feet wide with public walks, a place of general resort lined by theaters, academies, and foreign chanceries. Tiber Creek would fall in a grand cascade from Capitol Hill down to the Mall and be channeled into a canal to the Potomac and the Anacostia Rivers. But in the 1860s, the Mall was a far cry from L'Enfant's concept. Instead, it was a jumble of buildings and trees. The Smithsonian Castle was in place, and the stump of the Washington Monument. But far from a beautiful waterway, the canal was a fetid sewer at the foot of the Capitol. By 1900, trees covered the Mall, and Tiber Creek had been buried under what is today Constitution Avenue. The Smithsonian Castle and the Arts and Industries building nearby were enveloped in a Victorian garden with meandering pathways. A railroad shed and tracks crossed at the foot of the Capitol. Lafayette's symbolic cross axis framed by the Capitol, White House, and Monument was in place. But the Monument had been constructed southeast of Lafayette's intended site due to poor soil conditions so close to the Potomac River shoreline. These were the conditions when, in 1901, Congress created the Senate Park Commission to restore L'Enfant's vision and plan for the future. Also known as the Macmillan Commission, this commission included eminent architect Daniel Burnham, landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted, Jr., architect Charles McKim, and artist Augustus St. Gaudens. The designers studied L'Enfant's original vision and visited the grand gardens of Europe, including Versailles, which might have inspired L'Enfant's plan, taking photographs of fountains and pools the designers thought would provide refreshment during Washington's torrid summers. They created a grand new vision for the mall that more than doubled its size. By expanding onto landfill dredged in the 1880s and 90s from the Potomac River by the Army Corps of Engineers, they extended the mall's east-west axis one mile to the Lincoln Memorial and the White House axis southward to what became the Jefferson Memorial. The Lincoln Memorial added an important new chapter to the American story. The Washington Monument, now the centerpiece of this grand city beautiful vision, 
was to be an elaborate European-style formal garden, filled with reflecting pools, fountains, sculpture, and ordered plantings of trees, approached down a grand staircase, with a round pool to mark the intended location for the monument at the focal point of the Mall Cross Axis. The Macmillan Plan guided mall development through the 20th century. The Lincoln Memorial was completed in 1922. While the eastern parts of the mall were still covered with trees and buildings that were only cleared out in the 1930s. Plans to build the Grand Monument Garden were abandoned in the 1930s after engineering studies showed that the required excavations could undermine the monument's foundation which was not built to bedrock. So today, the only permanent change has been the recent addition of oval-shaped security walls and walkways. But L'Enfant's cross-axis and the intended location of the Macmillan Pool is marked by the little-noticed granite stone called the Jefferson Pier. By the 1960s, the Eastern Mall was cleared of trees, but the western portions were marred by temporary buildings that had been erected during World War I and World War II for government workers and still surrounded the reflecting pool and the grounds of the Washington Monument. These were finally removed in the late 1960s to reveal the mall we think of today, the picture postcard view of the great green expanse framed by rows of trees and museums stretching from the Capitol past the great obelisk to the Lincoln Memorial. Throughout the 20th century, new museums were added to the Eastern Mall, the latest being the American Indian Museum dedicated in 2004. The next will be the National Museum of African American History and Culture located at the foot of the Washington Monument near the American History Museum. What's after that? Supporters for a Latino American Museum are looking at four locations on the Mall. A new development trend took hold in the 1980s. The mall's western areas became the preferred site for new memorials, beginning with the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in 1982, followed by the Korean Veterans Memorial in 1995, FDR in 1997, the World War II Memorial in 2004, and the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial that will be dedicated this year. The American public made this great urban park their own. Local residents and visitors alike skated on the reflecting pool, played tennis a stone's throw from the Capitol, and then, as now, played ball on the inspiring landscape. Moreover, citizens gave the mall new meaning as a place of civic engagement and First Amendment activities, such as the Bonus March, during which World War I veterans demanded the bonus pay Congress had promised them. Marian Anderson singing My Country Tis of Thee on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, the first of what was to become a tradition of civil rights events on this spot. And hundreds of thousands of people rallying for the Promise Keepers March and anti-war protests. The vast open space held over two million people during President Obama's inauguration. Thousands of panels of the AIDS quilt. Crowds of families exploring cultures at the annual Folklife Festival and the solar decathlon display of youthful innovations designed to meet energy challenges of the future. Today, our task is to rejuvenate the mall's aging infrastructure and landscape elements, while at the same time creating a new, forward-looking visionary plan for this great stage for American democracy in its third century. The original L'Enfant Vision, the first century mall, established the symbolic framework and cross-axis. A century later, the Macmillan Plan, the Second Century Mall, expanded that vision to tell the continuing American story. The Third Century Mall can build upon these legacies by once again expanding the geographic boundaries and extending the symbolic framework to embrace our newer presidential monuments to Kennedy, Theodore Roosevelt, Johnson, and the future Eisenhower Memorial near the Air and Space Museum. A new forward-looking visionary plan can create prominent new locations for future museums, monuments, and public activities so the mall in its third century can continue to grow in meaning as America's never-ending story unfolds. The story continues. Imagine the possibilities.